Mavericks have been oh so close. Palmquist tees one up. Oh, oh it gets there it is! There it is! Score! Mavericks win! Mavericks win! Zach Steppen off the rebound. Brings it from right along the goal line. And the Mavericks in overtime. Five four winners. They will move on to the WCHA Final Four next weekend in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh. What an overtime. What a game by the Mavericks. We'll get a few different looks at this one. Off the draw. Dolphus keys it up. AC Steffen, weak side. Dolphus had made the first save, but then just getting back in time. It's Steffen. Steffen is his eighth goal of the season. Of the season. We'll pick Stephon. up the assist from the public address announcer. Assisted by number 27, Brent Stern, and number 22, Johnny McGinnis. Step on from Stern and McGinnis, 16-32 of overtime. Oh, my. I don't know if we could have put up with any extra hockey yet tonight here. What an overtime. What a game by the Mavericks. Four times they trailed by a goal in the contest. Four times they would come back, and in overtime, they hit two pipes. And then finally, off one of those all-important draws, which we've talked about so many times this season. Final score this evening, Mavericks 5. Northern, uh, Northern Michigan Wildcats 4 in overtime. 16-32 in overtime. Zach Steffen finishes, but wow, what a game. Yeah, it was. You know what? I uh, learned, learned a lot about my guys tonight. You know, um, that was about as hard fought as a win as we've had all season. Uh, every time... They made a push, we answered the bell, uh, and it was just, I, I thought the stick to was fantastic tonight. They stayed together, uh, competed, and I, I just thought, I, di I didn't know how much red paint was gonna get on that puck before it, uh, before it went by the goal line, um, but it's a tremendous weekend for us. When the captain's got the puck in front of the net like that in overtime, you got to think it's over. And he caught just the slightest bit of uh, pipe, and it goes wide. Then you hit another one, and you start to wonder, is it going to ever go in? Yeah, you do. We're thinking that from the bench, but I'm going to tell you, um, the thing that I was most impressed with our guys, there was no rattle to them. Uh, and I'm not saying that just for a fact. I mean, I was impressed with how the guys handled it on the bench, the leadership group. Uh, they really stuck together and found a way to win this game. It'd be real easy knowing that you've got Sunday night available to you to just say, God, we're down three to two, we're down four to three late, and, and say, you know what, we got another night, but your team just did not do that. No, and again, that's uh, attributed to our leadership core, Johnny McGinnis scoring a goal tonight. Bryce Gervais is just taking his game to a completely new level, and you know what, the one thing I'll say about Zach Stepan, he's always found a way to make differences at every level that he's played, and uh, he was a difference maker for us tonight. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Maverick hockey coach Mike Hastings. We're going to get the goal uh, scorer in here, the game winner. Zach Steppen joins us now. Pretty big goal. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really ever scored a goal like that before, so it was fun to finally get one like that. Did you guys wonder if this was your night when you go down one nothing, you tie it 1-1, 2-1, 3-2, 3-3, 4-3, then you hit some pipes in overtime. Do you start to wonder maybe this just isn't meant to be? I mean, you can look at it that way, but the other way to look at it is, I mean, playing, we don't play down much, and when we did play down, we were able to come back and play as a family. So I think going into the tournament next weekend, we're going to be able to look back on it and say, doesn't matter if we're down or up, we're going to be able to win the hockey game. When you look at who scored tonight, Leitner, McKinnis, Gervais, Steppen, those are the guys that are going to have to do it at uh, the Van Andel coming up at uh, the Final Five. Yeah, I mean, a couple of big guys stepped up and scored some big goals, but if you look at it all around, everyone played their part. And uh, Even though uh, there's some of the goals aren't going in, like our, our goal line with Nolsey, Hunterbrinker, and Gady, they, they're our energy line. And the, when they're getting scoring chances, we're all jumping up on the bench. And those aren't going in, but they're making a huge impact on the game. So I think if everyone plays their part, no one can beat us. Also, Cole Huggins came up very big when he needed to. You get down four or three, but from that point on, he shut him down. And in overtime here, he just gave him nothing. Yeah, I mean, he's been big for us all year, stepping up as a freshman to come in and play like he has. 
Um, we didn't. We left him out to dry a couple of times. Need to block some shots, but we were able to do that from the third period on and able to bury one here in overtime to finish her off. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Zach Steppen of the Mavericks. Coming up next, Bryce Gervais. Bryce Gervais, two big goals. Tell us about the first one. You tied the game up. I think that was the one to make it 3-3 three, three at the time on the backhander. The, the net just opened up for you. You picked it up and stuffed it in the back of the net. Yeah, for sure. It was uh, obviously a great shot by Chase Grant. And then uh, we had traffic in front there. And Leitner uh, never seems to amaze me uh, how he finds guys. But uh, he put it right on my tape, and I had a pretty uh, open net there. Then the fourth goal to tie it in overtime. Um, Looks like there's a shot, and you're trying to deflect it, but it ended up uh, kind of flat on your stick, and you just grabbed it and, and backhanded it in. Were you surprised uh, how easily it went in? Because uh, a lot of times that doesn't work. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, I could uh, didn't even know it went in there until uh, the guy started jumping on me. So it's uh, it was huge. You know, we had a bunch of guys in front, and uh, Palmer gets it uh, onto my tape, and I found a way. In overtime, McKinnis hits a pipe. You, you guys hit, hit a couple pipes. Zach Steppen finally finishes it. But in overtime, whatever, were you saying, man, when is this thing going to go in and finish it? I thought we had the pressure on uh, quite a bit there in overtime, and you know we knew it was going to come, and uh, we just had to keep playing low and getting shots on net and getting bodies in front of the goalie. Got to be excited going back to the final four for uh, the Mavericks WCHF at Van Andel and get a chance to uh, avenge what happened last weekend. Yeah, for sure, and you know uh, that's what we're focused on now. We're gonna we're gonna look back on this series and we're gonna realize that uh, nothing's easy, and we're gonna have to work extra hard in uh, Van Andel. Coach Hastings said that you have really, really come on the last month. Uh, what's it been? I think it's just uh, my mental preparation, you know, that's what I was lacking there at, uh, for a while, but um, I think I've just been focused more and uh, obviously love helping the team out, so it's good. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Bryce Gervais, Mavericks win 5-4, 3.28 to go in overtime this evening. Zach Steppen with the game winner. Back in the Bryson Wireless Center, downtown Mankato, where again, the Mavericks in, in easily the most dramatic game of the season, potentially of the last few seasons. Mavericks with a 5-4 win in overtime, coming back four times for single goal deficits. The Mavericks with a couple of goals there in the third period of play, and uh, they get the equalizer from Gervais, and all of a sudden then we go into overtime, and after we uh, hit a couple of posts, uh, we're going to talk about some of this at this point. The uh, couple of posts, the Mavericks are able to come up with the winner. So there's the goals back in the uh, first period, and there is a shot taken there by Johnson following up Keski. It was 1-0. And then with 0.5 seconds left, there you see Leitner getting his 18th of the season. We were tied at one after one. Keski comes back with the goal of his own. Sniper shot in the upper corner. It's fourth of the season. Only to see McGinnis coming back with a power play tally. The Mavericks, a couple power play goals tonight. That's his 20th of the season. So now after two, we're tied at two. So we move to the third yet again. A one goal lead is VJ. One times it for a power play tally himself, his 16th of the season. Gervais would come back uh, with a follow up through the slot into wide open net there. That's his first goal of the night, 14th of the season. We were 3 3. Mashmeyer with his second straight goal, just like that last night and again tonight from the top of the slot to make it 4 3. And then Gervais, after Grant had drew, drew or the penalty, there you see Gervais on the backhand, his second goal of the night, 15th of the season. And as Dan McCarger has joined me, here's the game winner one more time. Better look at it for us as Steppen. The draw, Dan, you've talked about this since day one of the broadcast. Yes. Draws, winning draws in your own zone. And it came to fruition there because we got to draw with McGinnis. He played it back to Palmquist. And then Steppen hanging there with the play is able to sneak it back in front of the net, tapping it in for the game winner. And the Mavericks move on. 58 32. Mavericks out shooting the Wildcats night. Power play goals were big on both sides. And the faceoffs won pretty even throughout the contest, but it was that 50th faceoff that the Mavericks used to send themselves on to the WCHA Final Five. Dan McCarger back with us. You know, and congratulations to Walt Kyle. His team oh, came out great. And just fantastic tonight. And they, I mean, they, they got up 1-0, they got up 2-1, they got up 3-2, they got up 4-3, but each time the Mavericks had the answer. And that's what you're looking for in, in a good team. When you're down, what do you do? And, and I talked with Mike Hastings about it a few minutes ago. It would have been real easy you get down 4-3 late in the game and say, you know what, we're going to Sunday night. Uh, we played real hard here, yeah. but we'll, we'll take it to Sunday night, see what happens. They did not do that. Yeah. And in overtime, they clearly had the better opportunities. And we talked about the resiliency of the Mavericks all night long, and the fact they four times came back, and that's just they were not going to die and go away easy night. Some of the out-of-town scores we mentioned, Bowling Green as well has moved on with the 5-2 win. Uh, they will come in, and they would be seated fourth, and they would take on 
Fair State, State which won 3 2 in overtime, and that's only if Alaska can win tonight. If Alaska Anchorage wins, then the Mavericks would see Bowling Green. So we're going to have to leave the broadcast not knowing exactly where the Mavericks win again. Alaska and Alaska Anchorage, they've split the first two games. So tonight is game three, and they're just underway up in Fairbanks. You see the Gophers losing tonight by 6 2 margin to the Wolverines. 4 3 win for Wisconsin over at Michigan State. I'm just helping out because they're catching sure. their breath. Western Michigan, a 4 3 winner over Minnesota Duluth. And in a couple, of, the Duluth loss is big for the Mavericks and the Pairwise. Also, St. Cloud State losing. Both of those teams, their season as it stands right now, unless they can move on to the national tournament and get that large bins, they're done. So there you see the last series to be to settle tonight again Alaska and Alaska Anchorage. The Mavericks would play the next highest seeded team. Fair State has the overall top seed. Mavericks at number two. So if Alaska wins, the Mavericks would take on Alaska. If Alaska Anchorage wins, the Mavericks draw Bowling Green. Bowling Green, the only team to defeat the Mavericks in this building this year. What a night. What I mean, a, this is, this a, is yeah. from the standpoint of Bruce McCall and the WCHA, yes. you got your top game going into the double overtime with Ferris State meeting, you know, uh, Bemidji State. Our game went into a great uh, long overtime session here. You also have the 1-1 tie with Alaska Alaska Anchorage, and then you have the Bowling Green. So from a standpoint of parity and draw and exciting playoff hockey, the WCHA has really come through big time in this new configuration. That, that's absolutely the case. There's You couldn't ask for a better run. And now you're going into the final five, and we'll, we'll see if it's if it's Fairbanks or if it's if it's Alaska. But Fairbanks has been playing extremely well. If they win, that's going to be a tough game for whoever they end up playing. So, you know, yeah. Just depending if, if, if it's Fairbanks, it's the Mavericks, and if it's Alaska Anchorage, it's the other way, and we get to Bowling Green. But to, you get down to those games, I, you know, it's anybody's game, clearly, as you see here. You had the number seven against the number two, and it was it was nail biting time tonight. Our last broadcast of the year. We still have to pay some bills here, and that yes. means we need to bring you our save of the game, brought to you by Edward Jones. And Edward Jones has been so great all season, along with all of the sponsors. And here you see a big save, and that was a blast. That was a one timer right in the middle, and boy. Uh, Huggins had to come up with a pretty big save on this one as he had to get over, cover up on the play, and kick it out with the pad. Edward Jones, to win in sports, you must focus your strategy as the game changes. And we thank Chris Jensen from New Ulm and, again, all of the advisors here in southern Minnesota from Edward Jones for sponsoring our save of the game this year. And, again, this is it for our broadcast. We didn't know we were going to have to go into tomorrow night or not. I'm glad this was done because, as you said, Walt Kyle and the Wildcats, they gave MSU everything they could handle. It's got to be hard because they, they played exceptionally well from the second half of the game last night through all of tonight. They played really, really well for a number seven team in a conference. And they gave this uh, Maverick team everything that they wanted and a whole lot more. So they should be very proud of their effort. But Maverick's also very proud because, uh, as we mentioned, it would have been really easy to say, you know what, we got another night. We're fine, but they, they just would not do that. They refused to give up, and they kept on fighting their way back and finally got it tied up and finally got a lead, and it's the only lead they had oh. all night long, and it's the one that lasts for all time. You wonder, they hit those two pipes if it was going to happen, but the Mavericks again with three and a half minutes remaining in the first overtime. Zach Stepp in his eighth game of, or eighth uh, goal of the season, his second game winner of the season, getting assist from McGinnis as well as Palmquist with the shot from the point, and that is the game winner, and that's the goal that sends the Mavericks on to the WCHA Final Five. For one last time here, we get to thank you for joining us this year on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. It's been a lot of fun bringing you this season. Dan McCarger, Don Westfall, and the rest of the students from Bethany Luther College hang with us. Coming up next is the Maverick Coaches Show. Dan talks to Maverick head coach Mike Hastings. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next season.